good afternoon. Great to see you all. Thank you, Eric, for that kind introduction, and thank you to GNA for having me here to speak today. I know that those of you attending today were expecting our president and CEO, John O'Leary. Well, he sends his regards, and I'm happy to be able to stand in to deliver remarks. I'll point out that John was actually the voiceover talent in that video, which means he is here in some fashion with us today. Maybe more importantly, the fact that you're still here in the ballroom and it's me speaking is a huge boost to my mental well-being, so thank you very much for that support. As some of you know, last year Daimler Truck became independent from the larger Daimler company and is now focused entirely on commercial vehicles. One of the more exciting opportunities created by that change was the chance to think about who we really are as a company, what it is we actually do beyond the obvious business of designing, building, selling, and servicing trucks. It was a chance to reflect on our deeper purpose, that of our company and its employees, that of our dealer partners, and that of our customers. The video you watched was something we put together for ourselves. But what we've learned from a number of people in our industry, that regardless of any affiliation with Daimler Truck, they see themselves reflected in that video. They share as much pride in it as our Daimler Truck team does, and they should. Because it represents what it is our industry truly does. We are the backbone of the American economy. We are the engine of global commerce. We are the beginning and the end of the world's supply chain. Without trucks, the world would indeed be a much different place. And our world is changing as we begin a monumental shift to new technologies. It's the beginning of an entirely new chapter in our nation, our world, and our industry's history. One that includes a move to complete decarbonization improved sustainability, and of course, zero emission trucks. Change in our industry is not new. We're very much accustomed to incorporating new technologies. Over 125 years, it's fair to say we've adapted and we've evolved. Even in my own time working for this industry, I've seen the implementation of conventional powertrain technologies that have reduced NOx emissions from our trucks by 98%. Fuel economy in our flagship Freightliner Cascadia has improved nearly 35% since its initial launch. And advanced safety systems can now intervene for an incapacitated driver and prevent or mitigate catastrophic accidents. Embedded diagnostic systems can keep trucks running with maximum uptime. Again, change in our industry is far from new, but the pace and nature of that change has certainly picked up, and it has to. The move to zero emission technologies is necessary. The effects of climate changes are showing themselves in water shortages from Southern California to South Africa. Record-breaking heat from Death Valley to the Indian subcontinent and increasing wildfires from Australia to our own home in the Pacific Northwest. The pandemic induced shelter in place and stay at home orders throughout 2020 and 2021 showed us the benefit of reduced emissions from all forms of transportation. With many cars removed from daily use and very few people traveling by air, we saw a tremendous benefit to air quality in many locations across the U.S. and the globe. Conversely, as the leading manufacturer of heavy-duty trucks on the road, and as the producer of a large number of final mile delivery vehicles, I was proud of our company, fleet operators, and our entire industry's ability as a whole to stay on the road. In fact, our fleet's usage quickly rebounded and accelerated from the initial shock in early spring of 2020. Drivers across the continent met the needs of our nation 
and the world by providing food, medicine, and supplies of all kind to make life restricted to home both possible and maybe even sometimes enjoyable. Affirming what anyone in this industry knows, trucks and buses are the necessary tools to keep our world moving. Now we stand at the beginning of introducing a nascent technology to power them, one that holds so much promise if we can overcome the challenges to get there. Providing reliable trucks that are cost effective for our customers is the fundamental challenge of our company. We spent a long time perfecting the formula. We will continue to do so as we ramp up zero emission trucks, both battery electric today and hydrogen powered in the future. But the single largest hurdle in the way forward is the surrounding support system to refuel those trucks. At Daimler Truck, we offer our battery electric walk-in van chassis for final mile delivery and an all-electric school bus. These segments uh, with dedicated repeatable routes and which rely on central depots for charging are perfect. They're great applications for the current state of the technology and more importantly, the current state of the infrastructure, which even at a depot level still faces plenty of challenges in terms of siting and equipment and, equipment and in permitting. Later this afternoon, we'll show you and the entire world our new all-electric Freightliner eCascadia. This truck is well suited to dredge, pickup, and delivery, and other short-haul applications that are served by depot charging. I'm extremely enthusiastic, enthusiastic to electrify our portfolio. Our company is bullish on the opportunity, and our engineers are working to make them a reality for every segment we serve. But the truth is that it will take some time, as we heard from the panel, for the technology to catch up to the demands of all of those applications. It will take time for the cost to come down with volume manufacturing. It will take time for the price to pencil out for our customers, independent of government, government subsidies. But no larger roadblock exists than the lack of infrastructure and the inability of the grid in its current state to support the demand that will come with so many electric trucks on the road. As we all look at bringing battery electric vehicles to market at scale, we're graduating beyond uh, the past nature of our work as truck and engine manufacturers to embrace something new to us all, the interconnected system in which we all have to operate. As we launch our battery electric trucks and the hydrogen fuel cell trucks that will come later, we must continue to support our customers' success. It's not enough to introduce a zero emission truck to the market for their businesses and simply say, have a nice day. Instead, we need to offer them a viable option and the surrounding support to fully transition from conventionally powered trucks. We call it the power behind the switch. We have some experience in this. As was discussed briefly in the, in the uh, panel as well, we ran a vast pre-series development program that had roughly 50 of our customers testing a multitude of trucks. We've been there to assist those same customers with depot-based charging, giving us substantial experience in infrastructure build-out. Last year, we took another step in our evolution to launch Electric Island in our own hometown of Portland, Oregon. Working in close cooperation with our local utility, Portland General Electric, our team designed, built, and now operates the nation's first of its kind public charging station for medium and heavy duty commercial vehicles. I see both commercial vehicles and passenger cars pulling in and out of that station every day. Which shows that when we start with a commercial vehicle mindset for the infrastructure, we see benefits trickle down to the rest of the on-road transportation. But it doesn't work in reverse. Believe me, we've tried. Utilizing the public network of chargers to recharge trucks en route to customers here in Southern California. And what we experience is a lot of discontent and pain points. 
a limitation on space, on charging speed, and frankly, a lot of ticked off fellow motorists. The solution to this instead needs to be a network of dual purpose charging stations accessible to commercial vehicles and passenger cars. In addition to affordability beyond the question of reliability, the inability for fleets to access recharging infrastructure will be the single largest inhibitor to widespread adoption. It's what will keep these technologies constrained to important but niche use cases which is why we started now with addressing this challenge on a much grander scale. Here in the U.S., we signed an MOU with Nextera Energy and BlackRock Renewable Power to make zero emission freight haulage possible for a much wider swath of the market by building and operating a network of battery and hydrogen charging infrastructure. We refer to this plan as Project Juno. For those of you who have forgotten their Roman mythology, and if there's anybody in this industry that actually is an expert at Roman mythology, I'd love to talk to you because that would be unique in this room. But the uh, many interpretations can be made, but Juno represents, among other things, vitality, life force, in other words, energy. This is what our customers need to make the zero emission vehicle transition possible. This is the challenge that lies before us all. If you share the desire to move this industry away from its dependence on fossil fuels, this is the challenge we should all be talking about. It's a challenge we should all be addressing because what we have, what our customers have, is insufficient. We need greater capacity, greater transmission, and greater endpoints with which to recharge and refuel. With roughly 300 billion truck miles traveled in the U.S. per year, 300 billion per year, we estimate a 20% increase in electricity generation is needed in order to transition those to zero emission miles. And when we start to think about 50 or so battery electric trucks charging simultaneously at a highway rest stop, Almost any local power grid would be severely challenged and overwhelmed to deliver this power. Which means in addition to generating energy, we need to address the constrained transmission and distribution of that energy. Whether an OEM, a regulatory body, a utility, the question is, what are we doing to solve for these issues? What is our contribution? When the doors to the hall open, I can tell you that you'll get a glimpse of the DTNA display of what our company believes the refueling station of the future looks like. Listening to the panel this afternoon, it sounds like others are, may, are thinking about this problem too. I'm told there may be a few announcements this week regarding infrastructure investments, and we applaud those. Those investments are helping to make our collective future a reality. We all have a part to play in this, whether OEM, whether utility, whether regulatory body. We can't simply demand the shift to happen. We must all step up and do something about it. The team at Daimler Truck looks forward to having the discussion with you about how to get this industry from where we are to the point where we all need to be. Because we aren't building trucks, we're moving the world. Thank you to the ACT Expo for providing the venue to have those discussions. Thank you to all of you who have joined us to talk about our collective future. And thank you to all those who keep the world 